Hello my lovelies, Rob here from Kick by Garage. Now in this video I will be attempting to uh, show you how I fit a new gear selector shaft. This is a request by a watcher, subscriber. I hope you subscribe. If you don't subscribe, go do that. Um, and the thing is, uh, a lot of people are changing out their gear selector shaft because they're fit in fancy gearboxes and we sort of understand how to shim a gearbox now uh, with this type with a stud this is something I just made up myself uh, yesterday but uh, <laughs> to save the faffing about go and buy uh, one of these from uh, MB scooters this was uh, sort of a necessity I had one of these lying around and uh, I've got time but I just haven't got money so I made it myself so uh, I'm not going to do an intro or anything like that on this one and uh, we'll attempt to fit it. Now I can tell already that this is going to be one of those dark videos where you can't see what I'm doing but I hope you get the gist of it. I can't remember the fellow's name who asked me uh, to uh, explain this but uh, yeah sorry if I've got your name but anyway we'll uh, crack on shall we. So what you need to do as you can see I've got a stripped engineer um, but you do need uh, at the very least to take out your end plate gearbox end plate and you need to take out your uh, gear cluster christmas tree i like to call those christmas trees and if you're really lucky i have done this in the past if you're really lucky i have been able to lift out the old uh, gear selector and the with the wishbone in place and there is a, a shim at the top here and that has just been stuck there. So I've, I've simply just lifted it out and put the new one back in. Now, one thing you need to note here is that uh, before you start stripping your gearbox, the easiest way to, uh, to do this is if you select second gear and keep it there. And I'll show you why uh, with wobbly cam. I'll try and do it with a tripod. <laughs> but so the aim of the game, you can see this now, the aim of the game is in second gear, and this is also for five speed gearboxes. When you have selected second gear, if you slot down your shifter so that it is as parallel to this lug on the engine, are you with me? Then you should be uh, in the bold plot. So let's uh, have an attempt at fitting this. So there isn't any circlips on the uh, new style, <laughs> new, new style, the GP style uh, adjuster thingy. Where on earth? Right, so, <laughs> there isn't, uh, 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 yeah, this, it's different, it's different. So when you've removed your uh, last one, if you're really lucky, like I said, your wishbone will be uh, stuck in there, but this is worst case scenario. I am shimming a five speed gearbox here, which is turning out to be a bit of a pain. What you need to do is you have on these, you just have a shim at the top and you have an O-ring and then you have another shim and this one sits on your uh, actuator which is that way, isn't it, Rob, I think? Yes, it's that way. So what we do to, uh, to keep this uh, little shim in place is I put a, a proper wallop of grease on the top there. The stickiest you can find. And I've got sticky fingers. And then place the shim on your sticky stickiness and I will attempt to try and slide this in onto my sliding dog. Those uh, are pointing all over the place. Please go in. There, got it in there, got it in there. And then you probably won't be able to see this that well. I slide it in sort of in in position there and you can see the shim is still in place which is a good thing then your next job uh, I find it easiest doing it this way is uh, grease up 
the o-ring that's going on the top now if you if you've got a slightly sloppy bush in your engine and you don't fancy pulling the engine out of the uh, scooter then uh, the mb seal kits are quite handy because they come with one that is slightly oversized <laughs> i use them uh, in due course and i have to pop it in the hole at the top let me do that and i'll show you where it sits afterwards so I've popped the o-ring in there so that it's flush for the top there and now I can ease in my shaft through the hole here and I have to sort of wiggle it around so that it hits the splines and I have to do it so that it, it like I said is as parallel to this lug as possible let's give that a go it's uh, obviously impossible for you to see what I'm doing here but I definitely need both hands hmm maybe I have to have a change of plan that nobly works but I couldn't do it on this for some strange reason the splints are a bit tight so what I'm gonna do is feed it through and then try and press that into its home the uh, o-ring at the same time, multitasking, at the same time as trying to find the splines uh, on this uh, lever. All right, that's going in. Just trying to find the splines. Just have to wiggle it a bit. And now I'm going to, I'm sort of past the splines. I'm going to try and fit my O-ring so that it sits into its uh, home. After a bit of maneuvering of the O-ring there, it's uh, decided it wants to uh, find its way home. And now I have to try and find a spline that's as close as, so I reckon that's a bit too far forward. I'll try and lift it up a little bit there we go and I'll try and see how far the next spline is and that's a little bit too far back so slightly forward is the way to go I reckon like that that's pretty that's pretty good I have to wiggle both both the wishbone and oh, it's not going in. I have to give it a thump. See if I can tap it a little bit. There you go. I have to tap it down. Get a small hammer, lad. Right. That's it in place. It was quite tight, actually. And now, I just push up the wishbone a little bit. You, now, you're definitely not going to see this, and I can't see it either, so I'm going to have to get my uh, telephone out. After s what I'm checking for now is that I'm in line with the groove for the screw, which is, I'm going to put on there. And... Uh, I reckon I am. And the screw looks like this. If you're a clever so-and-so, you'll fit a button head screw. This is uh, what the Indians used to use, but I reckon the newer method of fitting them with a button head, it stops it from uh, dragging on here, which it can do, but mostly if you have a sloppy gearbox. So let's put that in there and see if I can uh, tighten that up. And there you can see the wishbone is in place. You can see it's not touching the bottom. It, that's why it's got the shim at the top. That's the only way you can get it in there because it's got a, it's got a place between the two sets of splines for your screw to go. And let's have a look at the top and I'll show you what the position is. As you can see here, it is 
on mine, it is just slightly off center from that lug. And I reckon that's, that's, that's good because when I tried the next spline over this direction, it, uh, it, was, it was way far back. So it's, it makes quite a big difference to the one spline there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, how you fit that thingamajig. <laughs> Don't forget, if you like this kind of stuff, Give me the old thumbs up. If you don't follow the channel, do that. Do the old subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. Ta-ra! <laughs>